Hi there, I'm Mike Gills for Everlast Nutrition, and welcome to part four, the truth about weight loss. So what I've done over the past seven days is to prove to you a simple concept, and that is that basically every diet is based on the first law of thermodynamics, and that is how much energy you consume versus how much energy you burn. So enough talking and let's look at the results. Let's take a look at the beginning of the week and what I look like seven days later. So here's just a quick reminder of April the 8th. So this was the video that we saw on the first day with the black background for contrast. Now once again, I wanna emphasize that I specifically overate to gain weight for this video. And a lot of people have no problem believing that if I ate extra calories, I would gain weight. But for some reason, they don't believe that if I cut calories, I'll lose weight, which is kind of strange. So just focus on the muscle definition and we'll hopefully see a difference. Here's the newspaper showing you that it was April the 8th. And here is the scale on April the 8th. Now I will be weighing myself in the exact same clothes so there's no discrepancy with the exact same scale. And this is 212.4 pounds. So finally, here we are seven days later, April 15th, 8 a.m., the reveal. Now I'll be weighing myself on an empty stomach and you'll see in a moment that'll make a difference. So right away you can see that I've dropped weight. There's more definition around the midsection, the chest, and just make note that a person drops weight everywhere, not just from one specific spot. And you can see from the side view that the stomach is definitely a lot less distended. And that's a big part because I'm no longer holding a bunch of extra food. Now for all the skeptics out there and to show you that there was no hocus pocus, I'm just going to show you a quick clip that these videos were posted both on Facebook and on YouTube on April 15th. And unless I was good friends with Mark Zuckerberg, I have no control over the publication dates of the videos. So here's the scale now on April 15th. And remember, we're going for fat loss, not necessarily for the weight on the scale. This is just for reference. So let's take a look. And we'll zoom right up, same clothes. And wow, 195.6 pounds. That seems crazy. That's like 17 pounds in one week. Now, the first thing to note is that I did not lose 16 pounds. What is good for the goose is good for the gander. I'm not gonna sit here and lie and say this diet is magnificent. The math will tell you that I lost about four pounds of pure body fat. And why I'm telling you this is so that you don't get deceived. You're gonna see a lot of commercials telling you to drop 10 pounds in 10 days or five pounds in five days or whatever the case may be. But that's not gonna be actual fat loss. When somebody drops weight in the beginning, a lot of that was just residual food and extra water that they were carrying that was just purged from their system. That's the same sort of principle when someone does a cleanse. They're not really dropping any body fat. They're just dropping extra weight by getting rid of some residual food and water. So why did my diet work? I'm no wizard or magician, but my body is a great mathematician. And the whole point of all of this was to show you that it was all about the math. It always came down to how much energy I was consuming versus how much energy I was burning. And to drop weight during the week, I just ended up burning a little more and consuming a little less. Now, I'm not gonna try and convince you of anything, but do yourself a favor and just say it out loud and see what makes sense to you. Either option A, I'm a total anomaly and freak of nature and this just miraculously happened, or option B, the diet worked because every successful diet is based on this first law of thermodynamics and how much energy you burn versus how much energy you consume. Which one sounds more plausible? Every year you're gonna find that a new diet comes along or some new method of losing weight. And then six months to a year from then, you never hear from it again. And the reason why is that if it wasn't based on this first law of thermodynamics, it probably didn't really work. Another point I wanna bring up is that a lot of people demonize carbs. But you'll notice that I ate carbs in this diet and yet I still lost weight. And if carbs were really the devil, then I wouldn't have been able to do that. And the one thing that I need you to note is that I could have done a diet of pure chocolate and still dropped weight if I was eating just the right amount of it. If I kept that right thermodynamic equation of burning versus consuming, even if it was pure chocolate, I still would have lost weight. One last little note. There are definitely some supplements out there that can either boost your metabolism a little or crush your cravings a little, but that still plays into the thermodynamic equation of you burning a little more and consuming a little bit less. If you feel that you wanna add some supplements to your diet to either boost your metabolism or crush your cravings, that is completely up to you. Just do your research and buy them from a trusted company.
So to wrap this up, the real truth about weight loss is there is no one secret exercise or one magic pill that you can take that's just gonna melt everything away. The real truth that nobody wants to hear is it really always comes back down to the math. And once you realize that it's not all that mysterious, you can start to use that math to work in your favor. Now, I don't recommend doing anything as drastic as I did. I was doing that just to prove a concept that the math actually does work. I wouldn't cut more than 500 calories a day out of your diet. What I would recommend is that you cut out calories wherever you can. And a big thing you can do is start switching most of your drinks to water. You also want to ensure that you have enough protein in your diet so that you don't lose muscle mass. Because in the long run, that's going to have a negative effect on your metabolism, making it much harder for you to keep the weight off. Another concept I would focus on is that concept of energy density. And that's choosing foods that you like. It doesn't have to be the foods that I chose, but foods that you like that take up a certain amount of volume that do not have a huge amount of calories. And when you're on a diet, this is paramount. It is so important that you choose foods that you like because the only successful diet that you are ever gonna follow is gonna be the diet that you can actually stick to.